I built some horse-drawn wagons, and I rebuilt several more. But there's a part I will remember best. I'll tell you of its story on the pony it was for, its destruction and a hero and the rest. With hand-picked wood and hardware, I had built it by my plan on motorcycle wheels that smoothly sped. With padding, springs, and cushions, I had made it all by hand, and I finished with it when I stained it red. I had in mind a pony when I first commenced to build. For her alone, I had designed this park. I worked with inspiration, and the children all were thrilled as they watched the slowly fashion from the start. The pony's name was Dolly. She was leader of our herd. <laughs> she even got the Morgans to defer. And any new arrival would be quick to get the word. She was strong and fast, and she was proud and sure. Now Dolly was a cob, to use the term as horsemen do. Her bloodlines reach back to the land of Wales. Her height she only measured barely 14 hands and two, but she went 900 pounds upon the scales. Of all the harness horses that I've had to drive or train, that bay mare was the matriarch of all. She loved to pull and never failed to answer to the rain horses half again her size would stall. The dolly cart pleased Susan and she used it every day. The children that she taught all liked it too. Her younger sister Angie often came along to stay for she hoped to handle horses just like Sue. And on that fateful morning when we got the horses tacked I checked the wagons as was my routine And when I was quite certain there was nothing that they lacked I returned to working on a farm machine Then Susan with the Morgans drove the big wagon away With a load of kindergartners behind Dolly cart with Dolly followed close behind that day with the weather watch conditions looking fine. The ride was safe and pleasant and was over short of noon. At driving Angie got to take a spin. She had such fun with Dolly that it ended all too soon. So she thought she'd drive around the barn again. Behind the green rebuilding, and she drove the cart that day. My five-year-old was riding with her too, and no one else was witness, and they could never say just exactly how the matter did ensue. I later on examined all the tracks as best I could, and Dolly, as I saw, had fallen down. Landed on the cart shaft and her weight had snapped the wood. She had stepped into a hole while turning round. The cart then lurched abruptly and the riders out were flung. My young son only got a bruise or three. But Angie caught the other shaft and upside down she clung with the right leg hooked beside the single tree. The broken shaft stabbed Dolly as she struggled hard to rise. With that with Angie hanging tangled in the rain. The horse began to panic, and the whites eclipsed her eyes, and she bolted, terror-stricken from the pain. Sue barely had a moment then to get the children clear, as round the barn charged Dolly like the wind. Then Sue spotted Angie, and she felt a grip of fear, as she saw the plight her sister now was in. A runaway horse wagon can make any blood run cold, though not as common in the Oz years before. It's like a car with faulty brakes up on a mountain road with the pedal for the gas stuck to the floor. A metal ladder crumpled as the cartwheel cut it down. The witnesses were frozen with dismay. A gatepost failed to stop them and it shivered in the ground as the shattered cart sped madly on its way. 
At every other stride, the horse's lance of splintered wood, the cockfish tailing like a wooden knife. And under the conditions, Angie did the best she could just to take the knocks and hang on for her life. And down along the windbreak was the foreman of the farm. A harvest crew was with him in the field. When David heard the screams, he rushed to answer the alarm, for his first thought was, someone is being killed. Now David was a big man, but he sure could cover ground. One younger, he played football on the line. He weighed 250 if he even weighed a pound, but he cleared the produce two rows at a time. <laughs> So David reached the headland just as Dolly thundered near. He didn't have much time to think that day. He didn't think of courage or of danger or of fear, but the witnesses were sure they heard him pray. He braced for the collision as he blocked her headlong flight. It seemed to him the only thing to do. I wasn't there to see it, but it must have been a sight, for I have no doubt the stories all are true. The impact was resounding as the horse and human met. Dave hit her like a football lineman should. He ducked and drove his legs and wrapped his arms around her neck, and he stopped her in the very place he stood. My brother saw the action, and he had this much to say. Nobody, as he said, could call that luck. It seemed that David got the strength of angels on that day. It was just like Dolly slamming to a truck. <laughs> My father saw it also. He was 80 years or so. He'd seen some things of horses and of men. But he'd not seen the eagle. And he wanted us to know that he'd probably not see the like again. I've heard of blocks and tackles and seen plenty in the past. But never could a football lineman say he met a bigger rival who was stronger or as fast as when David sacked that frantic mare that day. <laughs> Dave calmed the trembling pony as he spoke in gentle tone. From hot to Gaskin, she was torn and hurt. Well, Sula entangled Angie and checked her for broken bones, and she found her back scraped raw and caked with dirt. The dolly cart was ruined, and they brought the pieces back, and Angela, though scarred for life, would heal. But when I think of David stopping Dolly in her track, then I know again that miracles are real. The years have passed, and Susan's skill has grown with everyone. She was the first to drive our team of four. The Morgans, both are mothers. There's a daughter and a son, and it's very likely that there will be more. And Dolly's gone. She tragically got foundered in the end. Her rebuilt cart has been repainted red. And Angie? How she's grown is back to driving it again with the best of Dolly's full cinched up ahead. And Mr. Dave is often seen out walking up the rows of the produce as he manages his part. His smile is broad as friendly and his features scarcely shows the amount of faith and courage in his heart. And me, I still remember as I work around the farm that God has all these things safe in his hand. And when I pray his angels will deliver us from harm, I'm aware the angel well may be a man. <laughs> and me I still remember as I work around the farm, that God has all these things safe in his hand. And when I pray his angels will deliver us from harm, I'm aware the angel well may be a man.